Phew, let's take a breath, shall we? Whew, I need a break. How many times a day do we say that? Do we think about breathing? Really, honestly think about our breath and what we can achieve when we take a deep breath, step back, breathe in some fresh air, maybe go outside or open a window. Not very often and probably not as often as we should because generally speaking, we are shallow breathers. That's right, because breathing has become so self-conscious to us, it's so natural, we don't think about it. So today I wanted to share a little bit with you about um, how we breathe and why we breathe. And this is just a teaser for some videos I am putting together about different types of pranayama or life force as we know it in yogi speak. Pranayama means breath and yama means control. So it's we're controlling our breath. And there are different ways of doing this. And I'm gonna be sharing some of those with you in the future videos. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what happens when we constrict our breathing. There are various parts of our life that affect our breathing. Everything from stress, as we know. Sometimes we hold our breath and we don't realize what we're, what we're doing. And by doing this habitually, we're causing more harm than good because we're affecting other parts of our body, not just our lungs, but our brain and our neurological system. That's why you hear a lot of people say, when you get stressed out, uh, you're overwhelmed, they say, just breathe. Well, you have to know how to breathe and to breathe properly. So on my board behind me, I don't know if you can see, but um, obviously our breath affects our mental health, which affects our physical health, and that's a, a circle. It can be a vicious circle too. And things that can affect our breathing include uh, things such as our diet, um, our environment, and it could be just uh, our physical environment, our toxic environment, and whether we're at work or at home or driving. Also, um, our posture, our lack of exercise, and of course the key factor, those two, couple of key factors there being diet and exercise. And our diet, obviously we have a lot of artificial stimulants that help us temporarily in a bad way give us energy or maybe give us more focus, whether you're spending money on expensive vitamins that probably aren't working because your body's not absorbing them, to um, sugar, caffeine, tobacco, alcohol, uh, other uh, artificial stimulants such as these, which become a crutch in our life because we are not taught to properly breathe um, and create healthy habits. So by the, some of these restrictive means, even, that could even be clothing. Um, we're stressed out, we're going to work, we're wearing maybe tight clothes, belts, even neckties can be restrictive physically and emotionally. Mentally, we feel like, you know, we feel panic, we feel closed in. Let me turn down this nice relaxing music here. And, this can cause everything from headaches and panic attacks to heart disease. So when we're breathing shallow, like we normally do, or holding our breath, we are um, causing chronic pain and health issues that don't necessarily need to be corrected through over-the-counter or prescription medication. So this has become quite an epidemic, as you've probably seen with all of the drugs that are available on the market today, as well as all the pharmaceutical companies that are advertising directly to you, the consumer in your home, whether it's on your TV or on your smartphone or your laptop, um, in your magazines you're reading, and they're directing you to go to your doctor and say, hey, I need this, but you're not really paying attention to the side effects and the natural way that our body can help heal itself. So I 
don't want to go, get off on too much of a tangent there. I did just want to share some about breath therapy and how practicing and learning this through uh, other methods such as yoga or biofeedback can help alleviate or even cure some things such as migraines and headaches, chronic pain, hypertension, epilepsy, asthma, panic attacks, and hyperventilation syndrome. So it's even been shown in some studies to help improve, uh, reduce uh, hot flashes by up to 50%. So ladies, if you're paying attention, you can help reduce your hot flashes by 50% by paying attention to your breathing. So, um, and when we breathe in a relaxed state, um, we're able to, de um, to remove from that destructive metabolic state to a constructive one. We can shift operating from chronic stress mode, the fight or flight, because your body is constantly being stressed, whether at home or at work or with children on the road, because we're not learning to breathe, to focus, and to have clarity because we're too busy shallow breathing. As I said, that's affecting other areas, organs and systems of your body. So by managing all of this, uh, your alertness, your synthesis, this also affects the synthesis of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and increases the production of cells for your immune system. So think about that. A lot of people are getting sick because their immune systems are weakened because you're constantly in that fight or flight mode and you're not giving your body a chance to rest and digest and to rejuvenate, literally. So you have a healthier process, a healthier cellular system, hormones, as well as bone repair and growth and psychological processes. So these are just some of the um, tools that you can use to help with your starting with your breathing and calming, even if it just takes, you know, take a five minute break, go outside, get, um, get some fresh air, go for a walk, maybe stop, listen to some music. There are lots of tools that you can use to help with your, be more conscious of your breath to help control what's going on around you, but also in making decisions and your long-term health, not only your short-term, but your long-term health. So we experience um, the benefits of chemical, cellular, and neurological changes on a more subjective level by the way we think and feel. People, practice, people who practice open breathing through healing arts such as Tai Chi and yoga or mindful meditation, we are rewarded with optimal health but also um, we, see, we have a different relationship to life stressors and the chaos that can be going around us. People that practice these modalities such as, or these healing arts such as Tai Chi and yoga and meditation, we are learning maybe even subconsciously as we're practicing uh, the, say for example, your asanas, when you're doing your yoga practice, you're concentrating on your muscles of your body. You're concentrating on getting into the proper alignment and position, but we're also focusing on the breath and breathing in and not having short breath, but deep breaths or controlled breathing. So we have that energy and that focus off the mat as well. So I have learned over the years to use my training from my yoga into my everyday life, practicing these when I'm um, in different situations, whether driving or uh, in a group of people, um, leading um, a class to uh, working with, collaborating with other professionals. Um, any area of your life, you can take what you're learning from yoga and Tai Chi and meditation and apply that to your everyday life and that makes a tremendous difference in your life. More focus, more energy, more clarity, better sleep. And there are so many benefits to proper breathing and yoga that we will explore.
uh, through our practice. Uh, as you are probably aware, more people that come to yoga start yoga and continue usually because they're doing the physical aspects, the asanas, they're learning to control, they're getting better posture and alignment. Maybe they have more energy, maybe you're sleeping better. Um, learning to, uh, maybe if you have back issues, you start doing yoga because a friend of yours says, hey, this has really helped me with my low back pain or it's helped me with my headaches. Um, people generally keep coming back because they are learning other, they're learning these benefits from not just the asana, but the breathing techniques and how this is gonna help apply to their everyday life going forward. So uh, that's what I wanted to share with you right now. I will be doing, as I said, some more videos here about different styles, different types of breathing, pranayama. We're gonna be talking about the um, controlled breathing, the lion's breath, the um, skull shining breath and of course the benefits when you want to use different types of breathing because certain breathing you don't want to do um, uh, at nighttime for example because you are you want to be more calming you want to use if you want to say you're getting ready for bed and you need to do some calming breaths you might want to use the uji um, the conqueror breath which quiets the brain and slows and smooths the breath out. And um, one of my favorites is Nadi Shodami Shodana, which is channel cleaning breath. And this is great for when you first wake up in the morning, maybe giving some clarity, but it helps uh, lower the heart rate, reduce stress and anxiety. So this is a great one to use when you're at work feeling stressed or maybe even at home, um, at ho with uh, kids. This synchronizes the two hemispheres of the brain and it is said to purify the subtle energy channels, the nadis of the body so the prana flows more easily during your um, asana practice. So these are some of the techniques that I will be sharing with you and I hope to see you in future videos. I hope, uh, thank you for staying with me this long through this introduction. And please like, subscribe, and share this video with friends as we will be moving forward into some more pranayama techniques you can use by themselves or during your practice and throughout the day. Thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. I know how valuable that is. And uh, questions, comments, please leave them below. I look forward to sharing with you what I learn and how I can help you. Thank you and namaste.